All right, Dave here with another exciting tutorial. And today I wanna to talk about poly painting, okay, in ZBrush. I feel like there's sometimes some confusion around this. What does poly painting actually mean and how does it relate to the UVs? Okay, so let's let's go ahead and kind of dive right in. So I, in Lightbox, I just went to um, this character here, the demo female head, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of demonstrate poly painting on here and again, how it relates to UVs. But first of all, I kind of wanna show this. If I go to, um, I'm in the tool menu over here and if you don't see that, it's right here. But if I go down here to UV map, I can see that I can't click on morph UV. That means that this doesn't have any UVs yet. So I just have Maya here, but you could use kind of any external package. You can even UV map in ZBrush. This isn't necessarily a UV mapping uh, demonstration, but I want to talk about UV, how the UVs relate to poly painting. So you can see here that I have that same face and I have it UV mapped this way and I have it UV mapped this way. Okay. Not that, um, I mean, I, you could argue that this one's better than this one, but I feel like I'm just showing kind of two different approaches and how I can actually paint in ZBrush prior to having the UVs finished. So again, there is absolutely no UVs on this. And I know that's kind of a weird thought, but let's just kind of go with it. So what is poly painting? Well, up here, um, normally we have Z add and Z sub. Those get all the attention, but over here, I have something else. This is RGB. This is gonna be our color channel. Now, if I go to color, um, and I'm gonna first, choose a color here. Okay, I can see that the um, eyes are changing and that's because if I go into subtool, um, basically I have the head and if I turn this off for a second, now if I change this, you can see the whole thing changes color. Um, and what I want is I want to flood this with white. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to RGB. My, my RGB intensity is up to 100% and if I go to color, I'm just gonna hit fill object. And when I do that, I can see in the subtools that paintbrush goes on. Okay, that indicates that this is activated poly painting. Okay, now if I change color, I can see that anything else that I didn't flood white is going to change a different color, which is kind of creepy. If I wanted to flood the eyes white, I would have to go over here, select the eyes, notice that the paintbrush is not on, and I'd have to go to color, fill object. Okay, great. Now I can go back to the head and I can start painting. So I'm just gonna go to my regular standard brush and my regular freehand, and I'm gonna pick a color. Now notice that it doesn't change color right now because I filled it with white. So now if I tap the space bar, kind of change my draw size, I go like this, I can see that it's quite pixelated, okay? Um, just like when you're sculpting, okay? You can't really sculpt a straight line or a, you know, a tight line if it's really low poly. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go to geometry and I'm gonna hit divide. When I hit divide, I can see that it, it looks better. If I hit divide more, it looks better yet. And I'm gonna divide some more. So I'm gonna go up here to 3.3 million and, and actually that looks pretty good. Okay, now 3.3 million, I can start to paint, and if I introduce a different color, I can go like that, and then if I hold down shift, I can smooth, and you can see that I can even blend those together, which is pretty cool, okay? So shift is smooth, and that's gonna work on the coloring as well. Um, and if I wanted to erase that, I could go to my pure white, and I could come in here, and because that's what it was initially, is this, is this just white. Um, okay, cool. So what's going on here? Well, you know, this isn't necessarily a painting tutorial. Like I'm not gonna go like some fancy um, paint. I'm just gonna kind of do some, uh, something that we can kind of tell what's going on. So I'm just gonna kind of do a pattern around the eye. Okay. Like obviously it doesn't really matter what this is. And I could make this as complex as I want. Okay, maybe I introduce another color and Great. So what I'm doing is I'm painting on the model and the resolution, in other words, how good the paint is, 
depends on how many pixels, or I'm sorry, how many uh, polygons it is. It has nothing to do with the UV map because again, the UV map is not even established yet. So how can I then transfer this information onto the UV map? Because remember, if I go down here, there is no UV map, okay? So if I go to texture map, I'm gonna say, you know what, I want a new texture. And how big is this texture? Well, if I hover over it, I can see it's 2048 by 2048. And I can see that it made it yellow because that's what I had selected. So I'm gonna switch this to white. And if I want, um, let's say a new texture, I can go to UV map and I can choose my size. So I could choose 512, 1024, 2048 or 4096. Those are the most common sizes, but you can actually move this slider to 8192, okay? I'm gonna leave it at 4096. And now if I go to create, oh, I'm sorry, if I go to texture map, I could say new texture. And if I do that, I can see that my texture is now 4096 by 4096. But still, I don't have any UVs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to bring this uh, UV structure in. And remember, I also have this one. So I'm gonna start with this one. So what I did was I UV mapped this character like this, and I saved it as an OBJ and saved it on the desktop. Great. So now what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna go into geometry. I'm gonna put this at the lowest subdivision level. And don't worry about the paint right now. It's going to match the geometry that I have in the other program. And I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go to import right here. And notice I have the head tool selected. Now I'm gonna to go to import. I'm gonna choose UV1, okay? And I'll hit import. And now you can see that I lost the poly paint, okay? But if I come down here and go to UV map, I should be able to hit morph UV and it should go into the UV that I had. Now, disregard the eyes. Okay, I'm just gonna turn off the eyes for now. And don't be scared, it is kind of uh, flipped upside down and that's normal, that's something that uh, ZBrush just does, that's not a big deal. But you can see that it is that UV map where before it didn't have the UV map. Okay, and if I wanna get this back, I'm gonna click on morph and it's gonna go back here. Okay, great. Well, what happened to all that detail that I had in the color? Well, if I go to geometry, note, or I'm sorry, if I go to subtool, notice that the paint is turned off. If I turn the paint on, it's going to, if I go to geometry, now I can bring this up. And again, okay, so I can't really see that. So if I come down here, let's take a look. If I go to texture map, I'm going to turn texture off. And now I can see that the poly paint is there. So I had a couple things here. I need to make sure that in subtool, poly paint is turned on. And I also need to make sure that the texture map is turned off. Great, now I see this, I see the poly paint, but it's really not on the UVs yet. So what I need to do is I'm gonna say, I need to create a texture map here. So I'm gonna to go to create, and I'm gonna say new from poly paint. And if I go like this, it's gonna transfer the poly paint to the UVs. So now you'll see here, if I go up here, I'm gonna turn off poly painting, but you can see my design still stays there. Why? Because if I go back to texture map, I can see that it's actually being driven by the texture, not the poly paint. You can see I can turn that on and off. Now, if I went into Photoshop or if I went into another program, I could actually paint on this structure and then it could kind of re-import it in and, and it would just, you know, I would be working on it that way. But let's say if I wanted to continue this design process and I wanted to add to this. Well, I can't poly paint right now because you'll see here, if I go to a different color and try painting, it's not gonna let me. Why is it not letting me? Because my texture map is on. So I'm gonna turn this off for a second, okay? And when I do that, if I turn this back on, now I can come here and aha, I can poly paint again, okay? So why can I poly paint again? Because my texture is not on. 
I'm painting directly on the uh, polygons independent of the UVs. And if I want to bring that back to the UVs, if I go back here to poly paint, I'm sorry, if I go back here to um, texture map, I'm going to say new from poly paint because it's going to take this and transfer it to this thing here. So if I go new from poly paint, aha, there's my green now added onto the texture. And let's say if I'm like, you know what, I like this design, okay, but I want to do it on a different UV set. I don't really like this UV set. I want to do it on a different one. Well, okay, let's, I'm going to turn the texture off for now. Um, and I might go like this. I might go to geometry, put this to my lowest subdivision level, come here, and I'm going to import over the top of it. And this time I'm going to import with the other UV. Okay, it's going to look like kind of nothing happened. But again, I can see that the poly paint is still there. Now if I come here, okay, it's still there in its full glory. But let's go back down here, UV map. I'm just going to hit morph to see, make sure that it has, uh, that we're looking at the right UV. Aha, there it is. And the reason that it didn't morph really cleanly is because if I have it at a lower subdivision, now it's going to morph a little prettier. So if I come down here and hit morph, there we go. Now it morphs kind of cool. Yep, that looks good. So now let's go back up here. I'll bring this back up. Excellent. Now if I want to get this back onto the poly paint, I'm going to come down here to texture map. And again, that's the old UV, but I know that it has the new UV on, so I could say new from poly paint. Nothing is going to really change here, but if I look here, I can see that now it transferred it back to the poly paint or to the new UV. That's why I can paint all day long with my new, um, you know, with my paint here before I do UVs. But one thing that I want to point out that's really important is that the resolution on this paint is going to be only as good at, as the polygons, like I mentioned earlier. Um, when you're poly painting, but when you transfer it to your UV map, it's the resolution is only going to be as good as your UV map is. Okay, how big your UV map is. So let me see this. So if I turn this off, okay, I'm going to turn my resolution off. And again, I'm back to poly painting. Okay, so now the resolution is good at at 3.3 million. But now let's see what happens if I come down here, and I'm going to go to UV map. And I'm gonna not have such a big size. Maybe I'll go really small, like a 512 size. And I'm gonna say um, new texture. Okay, new texture. I'm gonna turn that texture off for a second. And I'm gonna now transfer this poly paint to a smaller UV. Okay, so I'm gonna say new from poly paint. And it's gonna go to this one, which is 512 by 512. So if I say new from poly paint, ah, look at that. The resolution was limited because I'm putting it to such a smaller canvas. Okay, now if I turn that off, ah, it looks good. Why? Because I have high poly count when I'm doing poly paint. But when I do this, it's going to look bad. Why? Because I have a small canvas and it has nothing to do with poly count. Okay, so just some things to uh, kind of think about, keep in mind, is when you're doing poly painting, you can paint directly on the model without con considering the UVs, and the resolution is going to be dependent on how dense the geometry is. Then you can send that to a UV, um, but the resolution is going to be dependent on how big the texture map is. Okay, so I feel like that's really cool that you know that kind of ability to be able to send back and forth. So. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. And then you can see, um, you know, create new from poly painting. And then I can go to poly paint. And let's say if, let's say if I had a texture on this character, okay? Let's say if I had a texture, let's say if I like this texture, and then I wanted to go start poly painting it. So kind of the reverse. I could go here to poly paint and I could say poly paint from texture. 
So if I did that, it's actually going to bring this low resolution texture onto this model. So if, oh, let me let me just do that. Poly paint from texture. And you can see that it transferred it on here. So let's say if you had, I don't know, like some photo projections um, on a texture map and you wanted to then hand paint it to kind of correct some areas. Well, you could go to poly paint and then poly paint from um, texture and it's going to send it into poly paint mode. Now you can kind of hand fix it up, smear it, smudge it, color it, whatever you want to do. And when you're done, send it back to the UVs right here. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. Um, if you like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you know someone that maybe this would be helpful to, go ahead and kind of share this video. I would really appreciate it. So stick around. Um, again, if you subscribe, that I've got new videos like this every week. So great job. Now get back out there and start doing some more 3D.